In today's episode, we're going to be learning how to do a whole bunch of color grading without using any third-party plugins or anything like that. Just good old-fashioned DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and hop into it and see how we do some awesome color grading. So I am here inside of DaVinci Resolve 20, and my timeline is set up as a color-managed workflow. And if you don't know what that means, click this little cog down here and come into color management, and then scroll up to the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this up to go to DaVinci RGB Color Managed, and then my output color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and that's going to give me the most accurate possible color as I'm color grading on this monitor. If you're using a Mac, what you'll need to do is set this to Rec. 709A while using a color managed workflow. So let's go ahead and press save. Now, over here on our footage, if I come down and grab all of our footage and right click, and input the color space and go down to Sony because this was shot on a Sony and click S Gamut 3 Cine S Log 3. It's going to go ahead and normalize all of our footage. Now all of our footage is normalized and we can see it looks very, very pretty down here on the timeline. Everything's looking fantastic. Step number one is to normalize all of your footage. Once your footage is normalized in a color managed workflow, let's go ahead and hop into the color tab and start color grading. And I'm going to go through all of these nodes so you guys can see how to create these and what each of them are doing. So the first thing that I like to do every time I start color grading is to just dial in the exposure. Now looking at this image, we're actually already pretty dialed. I'm gonna actually turn off all these other nodes over here so we can just kind of go one by one here. So this image is actually looking pretty dialed. I actually probably wanna just bring those highlights up a little bit and to do that, I'll hop into the HDR wheels and I'm just gonna push that up just a hair on the global. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just push that up on the global just a little bit, come back over here. I'm gonna bring up my gain, my gamma a little bit, Maybe bring down my shadows just a hair and increase that contrast. So that is sitting pretty good for me right here. Okay, so that is my exposure. This image was already exposed really, really well. So from there, I'm gonna go into my white balance. Inside my white balance, I have actually changed the gamma of this to a linear gamma. Basically what that means is for the simplest sake, all of my wheels down here are gonna are gonna react much slower than if it was just in the normal use timeline workspace. So in the workspace over here, you can see like if I push it a little bit, it does a ton. If I go into a linear gamma right here, this just allows me to push it a lot more and it doesn't do nearly as much. So now to do white balancing, I like to use the wheels down here specifically on the gain wheel. And what I'm trying to focus on is simply I'm not necessarily looking to get a perfect white balance, but I'm trying to create as much color separation as possible. So right here on the gain, I'm gonna go ahead and look at this wheel, and if I can see that I'm pretty pushed up in the reds and the yellows, so I'm gonna pull this down kind of over to the blue and the cyan of that vector scope. So I'm gonna grab this and just kind of slowly bring that down, but at the same time trying to keep his skin tones right where I want them which is about right there. Now, as you can see, we're already making a huge difference on that. So let's go before and after, before and after. And you can see how well we've normalized this image. Those highlights are nice and bright still, still nice and white. His hat got a lot more white. His skin is a lot more clean. So we got rid of a lot of those oranges and we just normalized and we spread out this vector scope a little bit better. We could probably push this up just a little bit right there. Push that a little bit more, okay. I'm liking that. I'm going to go back to my exposure and maybe just bring down a gamma a little bit. Again, just because you do one thing doesn't mean you can't go back and change something new. It's color grading. It's painting. You can, you can just keep trying new things. Okay. So we have our exposure and our white balance done. Let's go ahead and go into our saturation. For me, what I do is I go to an HSV for saturation, which means hue, saturation, and value. So I'm changing this node to hue, saturation, and value and I'm turning off the channel one and channel three and only keeping on channel two. What this is doing is adding saturation and it is not adding contrast. If you use the regular saturation slider right here, you're also adding contrast and luminance to the image. 
which we don't want that. We just want to add straight saturation to this image. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn this on, and you'll see what that does almost immediately. That already adds a whole bunch of saturation, because I've gone ahead and just bumped up this gain wheel right here, and you can see how it's adding saturation, but it's not, it's not adding luminance at the exact same time. It's only adding saturation. So I'm going to go ahead and just undo that. And you can use these other wheels too. This one goes just a little bit. The gain wheel just goes a little bit softer, so you can kind of push it a little bit more. So I'm going to be looking for a very saturated image on this, and that is feeling pretty good for me. And now what I like to do is desaturate it also, but only desaturate it in the highlights and the shadows of the image. So to clean up the blacks and clean up the highlights up here, because you can see we're kind of getting some purple tints up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and you won't see that much of a change. So on this one, I'm doing a color space transform, and I'm changing it to hue, saturation, and luminance, because I just want to, I just want to target the luminant values or the brightest parts and the darkest parts of the image. And then same thing on the channel. I'm going to channel one and turning off channel three and turning off channel one and keeping on channel two. So over here, I'm going to go into my lift and I am just going to slowly decrease this. And you can see how quickly that does that. And we are literally just targeting the brightest parts of the image and the darkest part of the parts of the image when we do that. So I'm going to reset that and just slowly bring that down. And I think that gives us a very clean, good looking image. So it takes away some of that saturation. I'm going to just pump this a little bit more, give it just a little bit more back. And there we are. So that is a really good looking image. Let's go ahead and just disable these really quick and see where we started from. So we started right here. We fixed our exposure fixed our white balance, added saturation, and we desaturated those darkest areas. And now we're getting a very, very clean looking image from here. Okay, let's hop into our look right here. And this is where all the magic kind of starts happening when we actually start developing our look. I'm gonna go ahead and click that on and you can see what that already does. That does a ton. And what we're doing is called a split tone effect where we're gonna be pushing more warmth into the highlights and cool into the shadows. So I'm gonna reset my curves right here. And how I like to do split toning is on the custom curves right here. I'm going to press Alt. And if I click and drag, that'll go ahead and just put a point on there that I can keep centered. And I'm gonna put this probably somewhere around here, kind of towards the bottom. And now if I click the reds, I can go ahead and just push a little bit more red into those highlights. I don't wanna go crazy with this. I'm gonna grab green and do the same thing. And so doing red, and green, I'm pushing a lot more yellow, red and green into the highlights, warming up those highlights. And if I click red again, I can go ahead and just pull back. You can see where that's targeting right there, kind of on his beard. I'm just going to pull this back and on those blacks, really just add a little bit of coolness to this image. You can see that his shirt is turning nice and kind of tealish right there. So go with something like that maybe bring those reds down a little bit more i can even just keep those really high in the highlights like that and if you need to move this around just grab this and you can click this and move these little dots around a little bit so you can get an easier a better roll off okay so let's look at that so there's the before there's the after very subtle we're setting some warmth to those highlights and we're just darkening those shadowy bits right there okay Next, we're gonna add a vignette. So if I turn these on, I have these set up in a parallel node. Let's go ahead and just delete these really fast. Press Alt S and then Alt P. You're gonna create a parallel node. And this is how I like to do my vignettes. Um, come over here into our power windows, click this guy. We are just going to spread them out like this and make this a little bit bigger. And this is just masking and creating a little bit more light depth within the image. So something like that. And then I'm gonna grab the alpha from this node and plug it into the alpha of this bottom node, come over here to the masks and change the key. So now this is affecting everything outside of the circle. This is affecting everything inside of the circle. On the outside of the circle, let's go into here and let's just bring down our gamma just a little bit. Actually, let's use our curves. So over in our curves, make sure these are all linked together. I'm just gonna bring this curve down just a hair and it's creating that small little vignette. And then over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just 
push that in just a little bit just to give it a little pop. And if you look, that is the difference that we're making with just adding a small vignette. We're kind of making the image pop a little bit more on his face. Okay, my final adjustments. I'm gonna go into my waveform over here and just double check that our whites, our blacks are looking good. I'm pretty happy with this right here. And so all I'm gonna do from here is just sharpen this up a little bit. Now I wanna add some professional glow to this image. So over here is how I set up my glow. And we're gonna go ahead, I'll delete this really fast so I can show you how I do it. So go ahead and press Alt S to create a new node. Right click this node. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a mat. All we're doing is gonna be adding glow to the darkest, or, sorry, all we're gonna be doing is adding glow to the highlights of this image. And using this matte node is gonna allow us to add glow to the highlights versus the, entire of the, the entirety of the image. So on this node, I'm gonna go ahead and type in glow, grab the glow, put it on, and I'm gonna say limit, let's go ahead and do alpha limits effect. So now it's just targeting the white points of this image. I can go ahead and just push this up. And you can see that is adding a lot of glow and we're kind of overexposing a little bit. So on this, we can grab the opacity and just kind of bring this down a little bit. Sometimes I like to add this to screen and that gives me a nice soft glow effect on that background and doesn't make us clip at all. Bring up the spread a little bit. You can kind of see what that does. I like to have a nice small spread. So I'm just adding some nice soft glow in the background. Let's turn that note on and off. And you can see that just kind of punches the image just a little bit more. You might need to go into your exposure at this point and just pull back a little bit on that exposure. But so far, I think this is looking absolutely fantastic. We're getting great color separation. And let's go ahead. And my final node that I always use on all of my um, images is this film node. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you can see what that does really fast. I, if we reset this, when you add the film look, it adds a little bit too much flavor in my taste. So I'm gonna come down here, do a clean slate. I'm not gonna use the film look blend because we've already kind of done that with the look that we did over here. And I'm just gonna focus on some of the color settings and the halation on the film look creator. First thing I like to do is just add a little bit of bleach bypass because what that does is just gives you a little bit of contrast and I feel like it always just cleans up any part of the image where saturation just needs a little bit more cleaning up. So that looks really good. Let's do the before and after. I mean, look how realistic that looks. That looks very realistic, looks very good. Let's come down here. And I also like to add halation. I'm gonna bring it way down and then bring the hue. And if you wanna see what the halation is doing, let's crank this all the way up really fast and you can see what that's doing against his nose. It's creating kind of this little red highlight right there. If you bring up that radius, now you can kind of see it right here. You can see that red bleeding over from those, from those highlight sections. So I like to just add a very little bit of it and make sure that the hue is red. Add just a small little bit of bloom to give it a little bit more of a glow effect. And then grain, I like to sit with 16 millimeter and then take the saturation all the way down and, or sorry, I like to go with a 65 millimeter, bring the saturation all the way down. And then I sometimes just bring the amount also down just a little bit. And that gives it some really good texture in the skin and stuff like that. So that is our entirety of this image. I think this is very easy. This is very clean. And then from here, you have a lot of wiggle room to, a lot of wiggle room to make adjustments with your image. That is how I set up my color grading. That's how I do a lot of my color grading. If you want this node tree, I will have it in the description below. You can go ahead and just click that and grab it. You can play with it. It's a really awesome way to kind of play around and learn color grading techniques, learn different things. If this was too advanced for you, just use the regular, like the regular tools that you know how to use.